also ready for the coming of the Lord. Be ye also ready, for him there's no way to our Lord. But God is gonna open up the clouds and let his chariot swing down. And we know not the day for the hour. Good morning, good morning. We'd like to say good morning from the Rock Springs Road Church of Christ. All of you who are out there and those of you who are on board this morning, we're getting ready for our devotional song. And it will be coming from our supplemental songbook. It will be page 20 in our supplemental songbook. My God is real. My God is real. Oh, hell. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I, I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing that my God is real. <clears throat> For I can feel him in my soul. And yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real. For he have a watch and made me whole. His love for me. It's just like the gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Some folks may die, some folks may scorn. All can go on and leave, leave me alone. But as for me, I take God's fall, for my God is real, for I can feel him in my heart. And yes, God is real, he's real in my soul. My God is real. For he have a watch and made me whole and made me whole. His love for me is just like you go. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, help my Father, it's again that Thou has been so good to us, Heavenly Father. Thou has raised us up this morning, Heavenly Father, that we might come before Your presence, that we might come with open and receptive heart, that we might be able to drink down these truths, Heavenly Father, and realize and understand that my God is real. We hope, Heavenly Father, and pray that all the things in which we are about to embark upon this morning here at the Rock Spring Road Church of Christ, that we will do it, Heavenly Father, in such a way that you will get all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Help us, Heavenly Father, to continue to realize and to be ready, Heavenly Father, to give an answer after we have studied your word to everyone that asks us a reason of the hope that's within us. We pray this morning, Heavenly Father, and thanking you that you Laid us down last night, Heavenly Father, and you brought us up this morning. We're praying, Heavenly Father, for thanks and thanksgiving of all that you've given us. We're asking that you bless our families and our friends and our relatives that are sick and, Heavenly Father, and shut in. We're praying for those who are bereaved at this hour all over the land and the country, giving us a special blessing, Heavenly Father, those of the household of faith that have, are bereaved this morning. 
We ask this morning, Heavenly Father, that you forgive us for our many sins, which we have committed, whether they were in deed, in thought, or in word. Asking that you blot these sins out of our life, Heavenly Father, that they not come before us, that we may be condemned at the judgment. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word and thank you for your servant, who will surely come before us, Heavenly Father, to work into our hearing the word of life, that we will all would say within our minds and our hearts, it was good to have been here, to hear another word from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is Father God. Go with us to stand by us, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for all these blessings. In Jesus Christ's name, your Son, your, Savior, your Son, our Savior, let every heart say, Amen. I'd like to say good morning to everyone and welcome again to the Rock Springs Road congregation that meets right here at 6481 Rock Springs Road in Stonecrest, Georgia, where we preach the unadulterated word of God, where we speak where the Bible speak and we're silent where the Bible is silent. We encourage you to be as the Bereans and uh, the Bible says in Acts 17 11 that these were more noble than those at Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the word of God with all readiness of heart and they searched the scriptures daily to make sure the things they were being taught were so. And we also encourage you to take it a step further and study to show yourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We want to continue our study from Wednesday night, dealing with Melchizedek, and want to close that out because I think we dealt with it unequivocally and we prove the fact that, that, that Melchizedek was not Jesus, and Jesus definitely was not Melchizedek. I need you to understand several things as we bring this part of the study to a close, that Jesus was and Jesus is still the only one. And when I say only one, I'm saying he's the only one that had no beginning. He's the only one that had no ending or will have and has no ending. And you need to understand that Jesus was and Jesus still is the only one that had no earthly father or no earthly mother, uh, period. And the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. Now, when that word be or before that word became flesh, if you have your Bibles, go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number five. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number five. We want to accentuate a couple of things. And since we in Bible class, we want to encourage all of our brothers and sisters to participate. Uh, that means you can read, you can comment, you can make uh, 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 other points known, bring to our attention what thus says the Lord. Uh, and we want to encourage you, those that are listening in, to also have your Bibles ready so you can you can participate and contribute as well. I need you to understand that when we talk about Melchizedek, people get this confused attitude about the fact that there's something mystical or twistical or incomprehensible in understanding uh, concepts about Melchizedek. That's not the fact. When we talk about Melchizedek, we talk about another man. And I'll tell you that in just a moment. Now, remember I said that Jesus was and Jesus still is. He is the only one. And I use the number one because he is the only one in number. There cannot be a number two. There cannot be more than one. He is the one with no beginning. He's the one with no ending. And then when I move over to the other side, <clears throat> and said Jesus was and Jesus still is the only one, that's the number one, meaning that there is no other one, will be no other one, cannot ever be another one who had no father, who had no mother. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word. Now if in the beginning was the word, I need you to identify with where we're going with this this morning. In Hebrews chapter 10, and the verse will be number five. Listen to the Bible, the word of God. Wherefore, when he cometh. Now watch this. The Bible says, wherefore, when he, he being the word. Because we just addressed that in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And you need to understand that, 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 that in the beginning goes back to Isaiah chapter 9, 
verse number six, Isaiah chapter seven, verse number 14. All right, it goes back that far. And so he says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. Wherefore, when he cometh. Now, he saith, now watch this. We know that he is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we know he came into the world in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And we came, remember, we came the immaculate uh, conception, uh, uh, the, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Because God being God, the word could not come into the world visibly. And you understand, be able to interact with him and touch with him. So you need to understand that that word in John chapter one, verse number 14, that word became flesh. And, and, and this is how it became flesh. The Bible says. He saith, he sacrifice saith, and sacrifice offering, and offerings. Thou wouldest not. Thou wouldest not. But a body. But a thou body thou has prepared for me. In other words, no more sacrifices of animals and this and that and the other. When the word became flesh, he became flesh with a body that was intended to be sacrificed for the sins of the whole world. So, and then we see that the word became flesh in John chapter 1 verse 14. And we see how it became flesh in Matthew chapter 1 verse number 23 so when i say unequivocally that jesus was and jesus still is the only one so let's pick up with where we left off on wednesday night remember i want to revisit the rules the law that we follow remember we introduced some time back the fallacy of equivocation the fallacy of equivocation and when we talk about logic we have to address the fallacy of equivocation. Uh, the fallacy resulting from the use of a particular word or expression in multiple senses. In other words, use it in different ways in the same argument. Uh, it is a type of ambiguity that stems from a phrase having two or more distinct meanings not from the grammar uh, not from the grammar or structure of the sentence In other words uh, watch this the Bible lets me know when a person is asked a direct question when a person is asked a direct question that, that that's a yes or no question and gives a vague response that doesn't answer the question that person is equivocating. Uh, if someone asks you, did you eat that last strawberry? That's a yes or no. Uh, uh, you either did or you didn't. Now, if you being vague about it, you're equivocating. Uh, basically, you, you are setting a false premise. Uh, you, it's, you're on the verge of a lie. Uh, is now the question is the question the question mark the question is uh, the Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14 is it Jesus now Wednesday night we showed unequivocally that that was not Jesus I don't have the time this morning to revisit all the applications but I will highlight some things from that remember we also introduced the law of non-contradiction the Bible has a law of non-contradiction in other words, the Bible does not contradict itself. God does not contradict himself. The law of non-contradiction is in the fact that it is unchanging. God is an unchanging God. His character is unchanging. His word is unchanging. Because God never changed, we can rest assured in what thus says the Lord. That what was true yesterday will be true today and it will be true tomorrow. Why? Because it's non-contradictory. In other words, God does not contradict himself. He's not going to say one thing today and say something else tomorrow. If God has a rule and that rule or that law is that in the beginning God created man. All right. He took the dust. He created man and then he formed woman from the from the rib of man's side. And then he told them to go forth and multiply. In other words, what is he saying? 
everything now going to reproduce after its own kind. In other words, there's no more miraculous manifestation of man. So in order for Melchizedek not to have a father, not to have a mother, God would have to go back on his own word. And that didn't happen. We showed that on Wednesday night. Then we have the law of excluded middle. Lord, there's no gray areas. There's no in between with God. It's either right or it's wrong. It's in or it's out. It's black or it's white. There's no gray area with God. God don't throw shade. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. We use it before. God said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, I would that you be one or the other. But since you are neither, since there is no in between, he says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Jesus affirmed this law of the excluded middle when he argued that no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can run long as you want to, in other words, but you cannot outrun the truth, the word of God, because one is non-contradictory. It's not going to change. God said it, God meant it, and it's going to stay that way. Then we had the law of rational inference. Rational inference. The law of rational inference is founded on the previous three laws, and it's governed how we link ideas together. Remember in Isaiah chapter 28 and verse number 10, where the Bible says precept upon precept, line upon line here, little In other words, we build on the scripture. So if I want to know what the Bible has to say over here, I just go right over here. If I can't understand it here, there's an interpretation of it over here because why? The Bible interprets itself. The Bible says in Isaiah 34, 16, he says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And then he says, Not one of these shall go lacking or wanting. Every scripture has a mate. Then the Bible lets me know that scripture will be the foundation for how we view reality. If you want to know what reality is, open the book and find the place where it is written. Now, uh, Melchizedek in Hebrews, uh, many are confused when they read these words from the book of Hebrews when it says the following. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem. All right, so if he's king of Salem, he's got to be a man. All right, number one. Uh, and if he's king of Salem, that means he grew up somewhere. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, so in other words, uh, uh, and if he's, if he's the king, he didn't just show up as the king. So he did have a beginning somewhere. It's just not recorded, like we said Wednesday night. In other words, <clears throat> the Bible is not saying he had no mother, he had no father. He has no record of one. There's no verification of one. It's not recorded in the scripture. Everything is not recorded in the scripture. God wanted you to see Melchizedek as a type of Jesus coming forth. If you can understand that Melchizedek, then you ought to be able to see Jesus when he comes on the scene. So for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, prince of the most high God, priest rather, of the most high God. We know Jesus was not a priest of the most high God. So we know we're not talking about Jesus who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham uh, uh, apportioned a tenth, a tenth rather, part of all his spoils. Now, we know that, um, well anyway, uh, let, let me move just beyond that because I want to grab another point before I get there. All right, and then it says, was first of all by translation of his name king of righteousness and then also king of Salem which is king of peace without father without mother without genealogy in other words without record of genealogy point Jesus had a record of genealogy his earthly genealogy 
all right? You could trace him back through David. A genealogy, you go to Matthew chapter one, you see his genealogy. No man, no man can be better recorded in the scripture than Jesus. Amen. Can't happen. So to, so to equate the fact that we're not just painting a picture that points as a type towards Jesus, then you will stay confused with the matter. So without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days, there was no record of his days. There's no record of his ending. In other words, there's no record. In other words, in order to be a priest, you had to be able to establish your lineage in the in the uh, 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 Levi uh, uh, priesthood, your father had to have the connection. Your grandfather had to have the connection. In other words, there was a parental linkage and lineage that one could link onto and follow back. Remember, the Jews' problem was that, that, that Abraham was our father. In other words, they could trace their genealogy back to who? Abraham and that was the argument they had but you need to understand that when I talk about no father no mother I'm talking about there's no recorded record of him having and and Melchizedek is not Jesus and Jesus was never and is not Melchizedek because Melchizedek died number one Melchizedek was replaced number two and we and, and I showed you last last week that the Bible says that 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 they had to make room for a second and that second was Jesus Christ he was the priest that would not end so uh, let me move on beyond that um, go to Hebrews quickly Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 2 and 3 I, I want to just let you know that that's in the scripture quickly Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 2 and 3 and then I want to pick right back up where we stop Hebrews chapter 7 Verse 1, 2, and 3. The Bible says. <clears throat> for this Belchesnick, for king this, of Salem. So letting you know who we're talking about. Book, chapter, verse. The Bible says. Priest of the Most High God. Oh, well, he was the priest of the Most High God. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter so of the kings. So letting you know that, that, that he was a man who met Abraham, another man. And Abraham, a man, paid tribute. Paid tribute to Melchizedek, which was another man. All right. Uh, I don't have time to accentuate all those. Drop down to verse number three and just close out with that one. Without father. Without, without father. Mother. Without mother. In other words, without record. We always saying this without record. There's there's no recording. In other words, you can't go back and put a finger on. This is where this, this is his father. This is where his priestly priesthood started because every priest had to be connected genealogy. In other words, they had to have a connected genealogy. You got to be able to trace them, the Levitical, the Levitical priesthood, genealogy. Now, remember now, I said that Melchizedek is a type. And so Jesus is going to come on. He's coming on as a priest or a high priest, and he's not of the Levitical priesthood. And all Melchizedek is showing you that he was not of the Levitical priesthood priesthood because when Abraham met him he was not a Jew in the sense that he paid him tribute and you only pay tribute to the other Hebrews or the Israelites in that relationship so he was not part of that relationship so just showing you the the type that's leading into what we're going to be addressing now watch this in his priesthood he being Melchizedek had no beginning and no end, meaning he is the first of his kind in the priesthood order. And that was all Jesus was. He was the first kind in his priesthood order. In other words, this is what is meant by he had no mother and no father, and he had no beginning or no ending. In other words, he was the first. He had no father that was a priest. He had no mother that was a priest. So you can't identify, you cannot connect a beginning and an end with someone you can't trace back. It's hard to put the first lie on Trump. Told so many, which was the first one. All right. And if we just start since he was president or was president, you'd still be baffled. Now, his priesthood is not like that of the Levitical priesthood who had parents in other words that you could trace back in other words this is what we're talking about 
and or were born in that tribe of Levi. He wasn't born in the tribe of Levi. In other words, so Melchizedek had no trait of ancestry to inherit his priesthood. So how did you become priest? And all they're doing is painting a picture of a type as how Jesus became priest. All right, this is what is meant by he had no mother or no father or he had no beginning and he had no end. Now, Christ was said to be a priest after Kata, uh, after the order taxes of Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6 and verse 10, and Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20, Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 17. Uh, the Greek term taxes or order suggests a similar arrangement. For example, just as Melchizedek, Lord have mercy, just as Melchizedek was both a king and priest simultaneously. How can that be? How can he be both king and priest simultaneously? So was Jesus. And we see that uh, predicted, prophesied in Zechariah chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 12 through 13, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 3. Now the preposition kata, simply meaning after, used with the accusative case suggests the sense of in accordance with, corresponding to, hence a comparison is being drawn. All we doing with Melchizedek is drawing a comparison to what Jesus would be. In other words, giving you a forerunner, a forerunning or a type of Jesus. Melchizedek was without father, without mother. The meaning of this <clears throat> simply means <clears throat> there's no genealogical record of him. And if there's no genealogical record of him, it's hard. For example, if you put in the FBI witness protection uh, uh, program, all right, they give you a whole new life, whole new everything. They even set you up with some cash. All right. They give you a new name. Anybody in here in the witness protection plan? I, I, don't, I don't want to be messing with your stuff if you if you hear undercover. Uh, otherwise, they they position you, but you don't have any. And then when people start doing a background check on them, they say, man, this guy's got no. Otherwise, he's got no pass. Melchizedek had no pass that was recorded. And that's all they're saying in that context. So when we talk about Melchizedek, that's all we are doing <clears throat> in that respect. In other words, so neither was Jesus. Matter of fact, let's, let's go over to Exodus right quick. Go to Exodus chapter 1. Then I want to go to Numbers chapter 3. Let's go to Exodus chapter 1 right quick and uh, put some flavor uh, put some flavor on the chicken. Question, yes. You have your mind. <clears throat> is the reason that the author is making the point that Melchizedek had no mother and father is because it wasn't recorded? I mean, common sense would tell you everybody had a mother and father. The Bible tells you Jesus is the only one that had that divine uh, birth. So no record. Right. That, no that, record. That, mm -hmm. We have so, no record. And, and his position at mm -hmm. the time is why this fact and this point is being made. Mm -hmm. Because in order to be a priest, right. there had to be a record of right. your lineage through your genealogy as far as the Levitical priesthood was concerned. But there was no record as to how he became priest, how he became king. And since there's no genealogical recordings, we don't know, they don't know, they didn't and could not record who his parents were. But we know the law. See, this is why I said you have to understand God's law. When you understand the law of non-contradiction, when you understand that, 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 that there is no <clears throat> excluded middle, when you understand that God, in other words, there's no exception to God's rule. When God created the first man, the first woman, and then afterwards he set a law. That law was everything. 
that come into this world is going to come in here through a mother and a father. Basically, they're going to make themselves over and over and over and over again. In other words, uh, uh, they, in other words, uh, the Bible lets me know that everything reproduced after its own kind. So that's what we're talking about. The record, and then remember, we said that Melchizedek was a type. He was a type, in other words, a foreshadow, a forerunner. In other words, he just painted a picture for you of what Jesus would look like, all right? Case in point, uh, uh, David was a man after God's own heart. That says a lot, but David sinned. David, not only was he in sin, he sinned. And then not only did he sin, he continued sinning in different situations. But then David would pray and ask God to forgive him for his sins, for his transgressions. And that's all he's doing in this situation is painting a picture, giving you a type. Uh, remember, remember when we... Uh, some of you may be old enough to remember Polaroid cameras. When Polaroid came out, you would, you would have a Polaroid camera. But that Polaroid camera could do nothing without buying Polaroid film. You couldn't put just any kind of film in a Polaroid camera. And then you bought the film in little packs. And you took it out of the box and you put the pack in the back of the Polaroid camera. And then there was a little tab. You had to pull the tab to expose that first film strip. You would take a picture, and then it would slide out. And then you would look at it, and you would watch it develop. You could even, even shake it to help it dry off because it was kind of wet when you <laughs> shake it. And then you would watch the film develop in front of your eyes. How did that happen? Where did it come from? And then you see that that didn't just happen by itself because with every Polaroid was a negative with it. It showed a little imprint of that picture. But the point was, and the point is, once you ran out of the pack, there was no more. God created Adam and Eve from the dust of the ground. And after he positioned them and he told them, to what? Go forth, be fruitful, and multiply. Why? Because there will be no more Polaroids like this. In other words, you're going to have to do it a different way. And what I'm suggesting is that when we read the Bible, the Word of God, it first paints a picture in your mind. And over time, you see it developed. And you see it developed. Now, watch what Exodus chapter 28 uh, beginning at verse number one has to say and take thou unto the Aaron he says now watch this giving instructions to the priest the Bible says take thou unto thee thy Aaron mm -hmm. thy brother mm -hmm. and his sons mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. from among the children of Israel mm -hmm. that he may minister unto me in the priest's office even Aaron, Nahab. Notice what he's doing. He is identifying his lineage. He's identifying his genealogical record. He's identifying who he's associated with. He's identifying his family. All right. But in order to be a Levitical priest, you had to have a family connection. That's the point that I'm making. But Melchizedek had no recorded family connection. So the point is, how could he be both priest and king? He is a type that's setting a mental pattern for us to follow with the expectation of seeing Jesus in the background. Now, in Numbers chapter 3, in verse number 10, the Bible says, And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons. All right, now, there was directions for who became priest. 
And then he showed the family connection and his son. The only thing that we're uh, suggesting is that there is no family connection with Melchizedek. And when people say that, that, that Melchizedek was Jesus in the Old Testament, then what you are suggesting is that Jesus took on flesh twice. What you are suggesting is Jesus, Jesus died twice. And what you are suggesting is that there was a time that, that, that Jesus came to this world, lived among men, ruled those men, and were paid homage of those men. And then, somehow or another, left the scene, came back on the scene through the birth of Mary, and started all over again. That is saying more, much more than the Bible ever addressed. Finish that piece, would you please? And they shall wait on their priest's office, mm -hmm. and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. All right, now, Lord, and if you're not one of them, uh, mm, so that tells me that we have a change in the priesthood. Now, there are some other things that I highlighted from last week, but I really don't have time to address those this morning. Uh, Melchizedek administration was without beginning or end, talking about those days, and we talked about those particular terms. You need to understand, uh, there's a point that I want to get to uh, quickly. Uh, nowhere does a priest come from the tribe of Judah. Remember Jesus was from the tribe of Judah nowhere in the Bible does a priest come from the what tribe of Judah but Jesus did all right why because there was a change of priesthood you need to understand that so so when I when I talk about now if Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek it means that under this new covenant the first priest of the new covenant is from the tribe of Judah so all we're saying is pointing to a change in the priesthood because we're leaving the tribe of Levi, we're moving now to the tribe of Judah. So nowhere is it recorded. So Jesus is the first priesthood without any beginning. And so that's all Melchizedek was. He was the first priesthood without a recorded beginning because he had no recorded parents that connected him to the priesthood. So how could that be? All right. So Jesus is the first priesthood without any beginning or no end from the tribe of Judah. That is why the Bible says Jesus priesthood is forever. Melchizedek priesthood was not forever. Because now if Melchizedek priesthood was forever, then you got two forever priesthoods. That could not be. Question comment right about here. Any inside or out? Now, you will read in Hebrews chapter six. You will read in Hebrews chapter six that Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, uh, is identified as the what? The high priest. Jesus had to die in order for him to become the high priest. And he now intercedes for us. Now Melchizedek. He was the king of Salem. That's the foundation for our, for our understanding of how Jesus can occupy the office of both king and priest. So when we do that, we know clearly what thus says the Lord. Now, I want to point out some facts about Melchizedek as we prepare to close. Melchizedek is mentioned in three books, Genesis, Psalms, and Hebrews. Those are the three books that we talk about. Genesis chapter 14. This is when we first see Melchizedek come on the scene. Uh, from 18 to verse 20. Verse 17 is our transition. And then we see in Psalms 110 in verse number 4. Matter of fact, let's go there quickly. Let's go to Psalms 110 in verse number 4. I want to show you something. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, we are making a comparison between Jesus and Melchizedek. Uh, look at what Psalms 110 in verse number 4 has to say. The Bible says. 
the Bible says, the Bible says the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou, now, 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 we're talking about Jesus here. We're talking about Jesus. And, after, and that only occurred after his resurrection. But notice, this was written before Jesus came on the scene. It was written before Jesus suffered, bled, and died. It was written before Jesus was buried in the tomb. It was written before Jesus was crucified on the cross. It was written before Jesus spent three days and three nights in the grave. It was written before Jesus was resurrected. It was already prophesied that he would be what? Priests forever. And the Bible says, after, in other words, similar to just like Melchizedek in the sense not that we're comparing the fact that Jesus had no beginning or end like God no beginning no end it, it, it's just that Melchizedek there's no recorded record you can't find where he started you can't find when he began to reign you can't find those things about him being a priest or a king and then remember in Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 10, uh, let's, let's look at Hebrews 5, 10 again, still talking about Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 10. Mm-hmm. Now, Paul is talking about who? Jesus Christ. Now, flip over to chapter 6, verse 20. I'm just highlighting these. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 20. Entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All right, now, so we know it can't be just like Melchizedek <clears throat> in the sense that it's the same as Melchizedek because Jesus is forever. Melchizedek could not be forever. Otherwise, we would have two forever priests. That cannot be. Chapter 7, verse number uh, 1, 2, and 3. And then hit verse 16 and 17. 1, 2, and 3, then 16 and 17. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, mm -hmm. priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, mm -hmm. to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, mm -hmm. first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Mm -hmm. Without further, without mo father, without mother, without descent, mm -hmm. having well, neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest, Notice, notice the word be like, 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 like. Other words, as a type, 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 type. Now hit verse 16. Who is made not after the law of a carnal, uh, carnal commandment, mm -hmm. but after the power of an endless life? Read. For he testifieth, thou art a priest for ever and after the order of Melchizedek. Talking about Jesus. Read. For there is verbally... Verily, rather, a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. In other words, the point we're making is that all we're talking about is right now is who? Jesus, because he is the comparison that is being made. And then again, he has no recorded parentage. He has no recorded parentage. That's talking about Melchizedek. Uh, in other words, there's no record. You can't go to the book, the chapter, the verse and put your finger on these are the parents of uh, this particular person. Uh, just like uh, uh, you can't find uh, the per, uh, perennial lineage of other biblical characters. There's other biblical characters that you cannot find the parental lineage for, but that does not make them something special uh, in the sense that they came on differently. And also, uh, uh, he was the king of Salem, but I want to move forward. Uh, was both king and priest. In other words, that couldn't be. So there had to be a record of him being a priest, had to be a record of him being a king. But since there, there were no records recorded for him, we have to let that one move 
into the book of history. Question, comment. Question, comment. None. Surely there has to be something. So, brother, I had a question. Um, is that is that the reason why in the Bible it instructs us that you know many things have been you know done or whatever I forget the wording that are not written in this book because you know situations like this. All right, in John chapter twenty, the Bible lets lets us know that there are many other things are are, are recorded, many other miracles that Jesus do that are not recorded in the book but the Bible says these are written that you might believe and know that's not the <clears throat> that's not the essence <clears throat> of Melchizedek all God don't want you to spend all this time on Melchizedek because the whole point of Melchizedek was to point you to Jesus and see Melchizedek helped you understand the fact that Jesus has no physical mother or father it helps you to see that Jesus can be both priest and king. Uh, even though the Bible says he is a priest forever, but he's the king of what? All right, remember he was born king of the Jews, so they say. So when I look at the big picture, all Melchizedek does is help me to understand better who Jesus is. In other words, Jesus, we put no limitations on Jesus. Jesus has no boundaries. Jesus has no limitations. Jesus is without limits. And so, because why? You can't record a limit that God has. When God is omnipresent, he's omniscious, uh, he's, he's all-knowing and all those other type of things, you can't put a limit on God. So, yes, when the uh, Bible addressed the fact that there are many other things that are recorded, there's many other things that Jesus did and the Bible says and they are not recorded in this book but it says these things are recorded these things are written that you might what truly know and believe so if we look this is this is the point that um, uh, uh, Nicola just brought up if you go to John chapter 20 and I want to look at verse 30 and 31 but I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to use verse 29 as my transition. Because remember, remember Thomas. Thomas had a problem. He just didn't believe. And remember Thomas said, except I see it for myself. Except I see him. Except I touch him. Except I put my hand where I know the nail prints were. I won't believe. Now. Back up to verse 28. Back up to verse 28, and, and it, it help, it'll help give you the flavor. Uh, John 20 and verse 28. Somebody have it? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, now watch, my watch, God. Now watch this, watch this. See, now I need you to, to understand three things about Thomas. Uh, bear with me because I need you to see the bigger picture. Back up to verse 24. Back up to verse 24. Because we have, we have three transitions with Thomas, all right? One is where he said, I won't. Two is when he identified. Three is when God said, hey, uh, you are an exception to the rule. But watch this, verse 24. But Thomas. But Thomas. One of the 12. One of the 12. Called Didymus. Called Didymus. Was not with them. Now, now the reason why, remember when Jesus was resurrected, he came and he appeared to his disciples, all right? Uh, and, 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 and they, 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 they all saw him, but Thomas wasn't with them. So some days later, Thomas shows up and they're all in the upper room together. And Jesus is going to come right through. The, he's just going to step right in the wall. He's going to step right up in here. All right. And you're going to see something that when Jesus steps in, he don't wait to be asked. He tells them what the problem is. Well, watch this. The Bible says. Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in the hands the prints of the nails and put my finger into the prints mm -hmm. of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. See, some things in the Bible is given to us as a proof text that we can uh, put, a, put a hook in so we can put a tag on so we can hang on to. In other words, that's what I need to hold on to because you're not going to have Jesus. You're not going to have the real deal with you always. But watch this. The Bible says. And after eight days, again, mm -hmm. his disciples were with him. So now watch this. So remember now Didymus, which is Thomas, wasn't with them when they first met. So the Bible lets me know eight days later, the Bible says. And his disciples were within, mm -hmm. and Thomas was with them. Mm -hmm. Then came Jesus, now, the doors being now, shut. Now, Jesus just moves right through the wall. Doors locked. He ain't knocked. He didn't ask nobody to open no door. He just showed up. Read. The doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. Then says he to Thomas. Say, watch this. He didn't even he didn't give Thomas a chance because God knows. And see, and the whole point of this is that God is making a point here to let you know that there's some things you won't see, but you're going to have to believe it because it was stated. Watch this. He says, reach hither thy finger. He says, since since you said you wouldn't believe. Now, he wasn't there. Jesus wasn't there when Thomas said this. Thomas said, unless I put my hand there, I ain't believing nothing. But watch this. The Bible says. And behold my hands. Behold. And reach hither. Reach hither. Thy hands. Mm -hmm. And thrust it In my into side. my side. Mm -hmm. And Read. be not faithless. Mm -hmm. But believing. Mm -hmm. he, says, Thomas, he says now. You can stop doubting. You can stop being without faith. And you can start believing now. All right. And see. And that's why Jesus had to have a resurrected body. Because if Jesus came back cleaned up. Fixed up. All patched up. No holes. No. 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 I mean. You know. Who would have believed it? Uh, so when you see the what went down come back up, you can believe it. The Bible says. And Thomas answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. My Lord, my Lord, my God, my God. Jesus said unto him. Now, now, now Jesus said, Yeah, all that's fine. Now let me get to the crux of the matter, because this is your problem, Thomas. The Bible says. Thomas, because thou hast seen me. Mm -hmm. Thou has believed. You see, and that's the only reason. Because remember Thomas said except I see him. I ain't going to believe it. And so Jesus made an exception for Thomas. And said hey here I am. Touch me. Feel me. Check me out. And then Jesus said Thomas. Blessed are they that have not seen. He said but blessed are they that have not seen me. And yet have believed. But yet they still believe. Read this. And many other signs and truly says, did Jesus. And many other signs truly did Jesus. In the presence of his in disciples. In the presence of his disciples. Which are not written in this book. Which are not written in this book. But these are written. But these are written. That ye might believe that, that Jesus believe is the Christ. And know that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. The Son of God. And the believing ye might have life through his name. Lord, so that's how we get it. So when these things are recorded. They're recorded so you can have faith. They're recorded so you can know that God knows what he's doing. He was planning for this before Jesus came on the scene. How will I know it's him? Because he's not going to have a beginning. How will I know it's him? Because there would be no ending to his priesthood. How will I know that it's him? I'm going to show you. And that's what he did. Did I answer your question? I did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question or comment? There's a couple of passages that we can tag on to and identify with, but you need to understand that, that these things are there to confirm your belief in Jesus. Not for you to get wrapped up with Shadrach, Meshach, or Bendigo, not for you to throw all your weight behind Melchizedek, not for you to even tag on to David, Samson, and Delilah. It's all about Jesus. And Jesus crucified. Question, comment? None? Oh, I'm so, I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt. If there, if, if there, if there are no questions, uh, any prayer requests before we close the Bible class? Any prayer requests before we close the Bible class? Yes, ma'am.
Your mama grown. She can go the way she want to. Oh, okay, dokie. All right, I ain't, I ain't going over that bridge. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> uh, we're just so happy to see the blighters who who, tra who traveled, made it back safely. God bless them. I need you to remember uh, not just window, but the whole Hook family. Keep the Hooks in prayer that God will continue to bless them, see them through whatever challenges they're, they're going through at this time. You know, sometimes, you know, we have to recognize that, that God is able to see us through whatever challenges, whatever trials, whatever tribulations that we're going through. We just got to have trust in God. And sometimes things come along to test our faith. Not that God is sending things, but things happen because you, you, you're living. Stuff happens. And, and, and stuff happens, and the devil will earmark some stuff just to back you into a corner and see, would you cry wolf uh, or would you cry Jesus? And sometimes we have to recognize that Jesus is all the wolf we need because he'll take care of whatever is in our path. So please keep the hooks, uh, window hooks in particular, in prayer that God will see him through whatever his challenges may be at this time. Uh, sis? Yes, I have a couple of prayer requests. I'd like to um, ask for prayers for my daughter who's not um, doing well at this time. So we're hoping she would go and get checked to see if she's, you know, make sure she's not diabetic or have any heart issues. And I also like to ask for prayers for Sister um, Diane. I believe her last name is Brown, who used to worship here mm -hmm. because um, she's not doing well. I believe they have her in a rehab now where she can't walk mm. or um, mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. And just want to ask for prayers for her that that she comes up out of this. Diane Brown, uh, some of you may remember her. Uh, uh, please, please call her by name. Keep her in your prayer. Put her on your prayer list. God is able. I don't care where you are in life. God is able to see you through because God's got it. God has your back. God has your future. All you got to do is let him do it. Sister Brother Wimberley, uh, I, I need you to keep both Sister Wimberley and Brother Wimberley in prayer. Uh, you know, it's, it's good when God gives you someone who can watch your back, who can look out for you, who can help you, who can provide for you, and, and keep you doing your trying times. And I, and I thank Sister Wimberley for being that for Brother Wimberley. Uh, please keep him in prayer uh, as he continued to battle his challenges every day. But God is able, and God will see them both through. We don't know if he's still in the hospital or if he's home or whatever his situation may be at this time. But please keep Brother and Sister Wimberly in prayer. Uh, Brother Fleming? Just to back up on what Sis said, we, we did speak with the Wimberleys yesterday, and he, 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 he's back. He's, he's back to King LeRoy. <laughs> So Brother Wimberly is home. He, he's doing better, I would, I would assume, since he's home. So please keep him in prayer. And it's good that we check on each other and look out for each other, that God would bless us and see us through. Yes, ma'am. We want to keep um, Rashad in prayer as well. Um, <clears throat> we have to come to the point and settle in our own mind that God is able. God is able, but we have to be willing to take our burdens to the Lord, leave them there, and trust God that he will see us through whatever Amen. our challenges may Amen. be. Amen. Let's, keep, let's, let's keep Rashad in, in prayer that God will bless him. 
strengthen him through his challenges and trials at this time. But we need to put God ahead of us. Well, we're always looking to Jesus Amen. and not to anyone Amen. else. We're always looking to Jesus and nothing else. And if we just continue to look to Jesus, everything else will work out just fine. Uh, he never promised us a rose garden, but he did promise I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. And it's good to have a sister that looks out for you and, and want to hear your name called in prayer because they're concerned. It's good to have a family, a mama, and everybody that's concerned. So let's be concerned as a family, and let's recognize that in prayer. Brother Norton? Oh, yes, sir, Brother here. Uh, let's keep uh, Xavier in prayer. I've been trying to catch up with him. I don't know where he lives. Remember, I told you he got burned out, uh, and I don't know where he is. I don't know where he stay. I left messages. And I put him. To, I put Brother Elder with him, so Brother Elder, because he's on that end, and I ain't heard anything from Brother Elder either. So uh, let's keep Xavier in prayer that some way, somehow, he'll answer some calls. We'll know what's going on with him and his family. And I'm also asking prayer for me. Um, I, I didn't get my, my, <laughs> my little temporary surgery, so the doctor saw something he didn't want to uh, be bothered with, didn't want to put me to sleep, so I told him, thank you. I don't want to be put to sleep since she saw what she saw. So I'm going. To, I'm anticipating not having some minor some light surgery, hopefully uh, somewhere in the end of this month, the first and next month on my hands. So um, I'm going to be all right. And just remember the Norton family as a whole. And Sister Brown says, uh, Joy Brown, she says, please keep her in prayer. And Sister uh, Jones, she called and she said, please keep them in prayer. You know, I think we're all going through some things. So we're just asking God <coughs> to look in and help us out. God is able. Uh, some of you may remember uh, or have seen Xavier, uh, one of our new converts. Uh, he was in several accidents, car accidents, and uh, then he lost everything in a fire. The place burned down. So Brother Norton was, his, was assigned as his mentor to work with him. So please keep Xavier in prayer that things will work out well for him and that he too will find his way and Sister Joy Brown and, and the Joneses and everybody else, the Norton family in total, who stand in need of prayer. Brother Fleming. Yes, Brother here. I'm just looking at a message I'm getting from my cousin, one of our listeners from South Bend, Indiana, asking for prayers for her family. Uh, that would be Linda, Linda Sanders' family. All right, South to, Bend, the, to the Sanders family that's in South Saunders. Saunders that are in South Bend, Indiana, um, God is able. And God will see us all through whatever trials, whatever tribulations, whatever challenges we have. We will definitely put you on our prayer list, put you in the middle of our situation with God. Because we praying on this end, God on that end, and you in the middle, nothing but good can come from that. So we want to continue to keep those that listen to our program uh, and, and follow us on YouTube, follow us on live stream. Uh, we want to continue to keep you in prayer as well as we make the transition. Any other prayer requests before we close? Yes. All right, Maria, one of our uh, new converts, is asking for prayer, continued prayer, not just for herself but for her family that God will continue to bless them and see them all through their challenges. Uh, uh, as you know, we have an ethnically reverse, uh, diverse congregation. We have, we have members from, from all points global. So we just thank God for the diversity of our congregation, number one, for those members of the congregation that are still recognizing that God is able and seeking and asking for prayer. I need you to keep Maria in prayer as she continue to strive to grow and be all that she can be she gets off first thing in the morning sunday morning she get fixed up changed up flip flop and come on in here and she worship god with us in spirit and truth and we just love her for that may god continue to bless her and keep her any others before we close yes brother Hare. yes uh this is Sister peters i just wanted to give god the praise give god the glory for uh, my sister Clarissa, she's mm -hmm. had a lot of health challenges as well as my other sisters. All of us have health issues, but 
She had another one. They found a spot on her kidneys. Mm. But just thank God that it was everything worked out okay with that. She mm. is well. And I just, I can't thank God enough for all of the health challenges that he brought my family through. And I just wanted to acknowledge him publicly for that, Amen. for what he's done for me. And I also wanted to ask for prayer that um, as I'm teaching uh, my daughter, that I'm teaching her right. You know, I'm trying to, to learn, I'm trying to listen, and, I'm, and, I'm, and that is the most important thing uh, in my life. Uh, one of the most important things in my life is that I do my part as her mother to raise her in the admonition of the Lord. So pray that the things that I say to her as I'm guiding her, that I'm always doing what's right, that I'm being godly in what I say, how I say it, and and being strong to when I'm confronted with things that may be uncomfortable for me to address that I still, I do it no matter who it is because I know I'm going to be held accountable for what, you know, I'm teaching her, both me and my husband. I want to thank, thank Sister Peters for recognizing as a parent today, trying to teach and rear your children in the nurture and the admonition of the word of God and, and to be able to be a model for them and example for them and and be there for them. It's a challenge. It's a four four challenge all the time. But we know prayer changes things. We just thank God for her sister being able to face all the health challenges that she's facing and still be among us, the living and the saved, and still be setting their eyes on God. We're just so truly thankful for that. And we're thankful for the Peters family for their commitment in their walk with God. Let's continue to keep them in prayer. Uh, any others before we close? If not, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we're truly thankful for this day, for your mighty works, for life, for health, for strength, for all, not some, but for all that you do for each and every one of us, for listening to our cry, dear God, when we call on your holy divine name, for responding to our request, dear God, when you ask, Lord, help us, please. We know, dear God, that you are that great physician. We know, dear God, that you are that protector, but we do know that you never promised us a rose garden, but you said you'd be with us every step of the way. Bless us, not as individuals, but as collectively. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to grant for us those things that we stand in need of, those that have health challenges. We pray, dear God, that you deliver them <clears throat> and restore them to a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we pray, dear God, for those that are walking the fine chalk line between eternity and salvation. We pray, dear God, that they come into the realization of your word before it's everlasting too late. And for those, dear God, who you bless to return from the hospitals, we pray and we just give you thanks for that, for that victory, dear God, and for the time that you're granting us all. And for those, dear God, who have partners that are able to attend and service them, we're so thankful for them as well. Bless us, dear God, as we leave this part, but move on to another part of our study in magnifying your holy and divine name. And we pray to God if there's anything that will stand between us and thee in the worship of you this day. We pray to God because we ask. We pray to God that you forgive us, restore us, and reconcile us to your loving mercy and your grace. That our lives will be such that as we pilgrimage through this world, that we stand before you and hear you say, well done, good and faithful servants. Bless us, keep us, strengthen us always is our prayer and our plea in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen we're going to ask our brethren to come right away we're, we're we're a tad bit late in getting started but we want to move right into our worship service that god will grant us that favor and that blessing
We would like to say good morning from the Rock Spring Road Church of Christ again. We're going to read a proper devotional song. If you have a supplemental songbook and a red songbook in front of you, feel free to get it and help sing. Our first song will be number 18 in your supplemental songbook. Where Could I Go? Number 18 in your supplemental songbook. All hail. Living below in this old sinful world, and hardly a comfort can afford. I'm striving along to face him. Temptation, show you tell me now where. Could I go but to the Lord? And where could, could I, I go? go? Oh, where could I, I go? go? I must say, a king of refuge for my soul. <clears throat> To help me in the end. And you tell, tell me now, now where, where could I, I go, go but to the Lord? I may have heard the fun. I love them, everyone. And we get along in sweet accord. And but oh, when my soul a needs man uh, from above, uh, you tell me, me now, now where, where could I, I go, go but to the, the Lord? And where could, could I, I go? go? Oh, where could, could I, I go? go? I, I must see. A king of refuge for my soul. A little friend to save me in the end. And you tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? A life the here is grand. With friends I love so dear, I come a what I get from God's own word. But yet, when I face the chilling hand of death, and you tell me now, where, where could I, I go, go but to the Lord? Lord. And where could, could I, I go? go? Oh, where, where could I, I go? go? I, I'm a king, a king of refuge for my soul. I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. And you tell me now where. Could I, I go, go but to the Lord? Lord. Our next selection will be number 99. And our read song books, 99. First, third, and the last stanza, 99. Oh, hell. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the slave of earth shall soon the glory share. Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy. Will be happy over there. We will shout and sing here 
dance floor and everybody will be happy over there. Oh, we will hear nobody praying and no morning in that land for no no words and for we too bad. All the people will be singing glory, glory to the King. Everybody, Everybody will, will be, be happy, happy over there. And everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praise. Everybody will be happy over there. There will we meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his love and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. We will praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praise. Everybody will be happy over there. We'll have a verse Man. of a song, maybe two of 485 before scripture reading and prayer. 485. Everybody have it. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls me from a world of care and this me and my from the throne make all my wants. And wish is known in seasons of distress and grief. My soul has all the boundary and all. Escape the prisoner by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy. I feel the bliss I share of those anxious spirits burn with strong design for the thine return and wait for thee. Sweet hour of prayer. Shall we stand? Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer that called me from a world of care and bliss. Me and my 
my fault. The throne may hold my wants and wishes no. Amen. Man, good morning, church. This morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Second Chronicles. I'll be reading chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. And it begins, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with the others besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. On, hit, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in <clears throat> Hezazomar, which is in Egedi. I have just read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. May the Lord add a blessing and hears to the doers of his word. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, our Father in heaven, Father, we come before your throne this morning, Father, with a joyful and a thankful heart. Lord, first we want to thank you for opening our eyes to see this day, a day which your word said was created for us to rejoice and continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for joining mercy for those of us who are in the building today. I also want to thank you, Father, for granting us the ability to be able to sit where we are in our various homes or in our jobs to worship you this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, our prayers this morning is that you open our hearts, you open our minds, that you grant us enough understanding this day so that what is going to be taught on our hearing, Father, we can assimilate as much as we can. Heavenly Father, in the areas that we lack, we pray and beg thee to fill us with your knowledge, to teach us continuously. Lord, we also want to pray that, we also want to pray for our sins, those sins that we committed without our knowledge, or those that we committed committed knowing well that we are committing a sin. Father, we come before thee and pray for forgiveness. Lord, we also want to pray that anything that stands between us and you this morning, that is going to prevent us from understanding, from hearing, from giving us the ability to assimilate the message of the hour. Father, we bring it and leave it at your feet this morning. Father, we also want to pray that for all those who ask prayer requests this morning, we want to carry this and leave it with you. And we pray that, Father, you grant them the kind of solution that their heart desire. Heavenly Father, we want to pray for our preacher, brother here, and his entire family also, that you continue to strengthen him day after day, give him the ability to continue to bring the word the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ, to us and to those beyond the, the lost church. Father, this time I want to pray for all those who are locked in, not just within the United States, but outside the United States, in, in countries far and beyond, that the message of this hour will be refreshing and bring life and soul to them all. Father, we thank you this day and we continue to pray and ask these blessings and many more in the name of his in the name of your son Jesus Christ our lord and savior amen, amen. we have one <coughs> we have one we have one song and now after that we have from your minister, Brother Hare. Turn your songbooks to 488, standing on the promises. 
488 in the Red Songbook, Standing on the Promises. All have 488 in the Red Songbook. Let's sing. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. <clears throat> standing on the promises of God, I'm standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Amen. Can we all say amen again? <clears throat> God is a good God. And whenever we awaken each and every day, we experience a new supply of God's goodness. Because God has been so good to us, we ought to know that we need to be a little bit better to God than what we have been in the past. With this another Lord's Day, we need to let God's word ring out and we need to allow it to mm -hmm. ring clear that I am and you are children of God. And because we are children of God, we're going to let the gospel bell ring. We're going to let it ring on this side and on that side. Tell men, women, boys and girls everywhere what they must do to be saved. Tell Brother Norton, if you would, turn off his mic. Um, you need to understand that God is able to make a difference in our lives. Let's do better ourselves than we have done in the past. It was read into your hearing this morning from the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, and the chapter was 20. <clears throat> I need to lay the premise before we get started this morning. You know, it's, it's it's difficult when, when we're distracted by so many things in life. You know, uh, pandemic got us stressed out and children have us stressed out. Spouses have us stressed out. Jobs have us stressed out. Life has us stressed out. It's so difficult when so many things in our life have us stressed out. We need to understand that we bring things, stuff, and them into our lives by not staying true to God and his word. These things happen after this. Do you remember stuff that happened uh, because of a position you took? Do you remember things that happened because of something you said? Do you remember things that happened because of places you travel? In case you are wondering, you need to understand that in Psalms 34, 15, the Bible lets me know the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. And then you need to understand in Matthew chapter 6, in the verses number 8, God knows your needs. I don't know, don't care what it is you're going through, God understand and God recognize. And then in Psalms 139, verses 2 through 4, we need to understand that God knows when you sit down. God knows when you get up. In other words, give it all to God, and I have confidence that God will make a way for each and every one of us. My subject this morning, don't worry, God's got it. Don't worry, God's got it. Moses standing at the Red Sea. The Egyptian army hot on his trail. Red Sea is in front of him. And I hear God declare, don't worry, I got it. 
I see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing in a heated furnace, ten times hotter than it ought to be. And then I hear the words of God echo through eternity. Don't worry. God's got it. And then I see Samson facing over a thousand Philistines with his back against the wall with nothing but a jawbone of an ass in his hand. And I hear echoing over the chronos of time that don't worry, God's got it. The Bible lets me know that fear comes upon all of us from time to time. Can I get a witness? You get, yeah, I mean, fear comes upon all of us from time to time. When something we value is threatened from external circumstances, we ought to worry. Not about that, but where we stand with God. When things happen in our life that cause us to worry, we shouldn't worry about that. We ought to worry about where we stand with God. See, because that God would take care of. But if I'm not right with God, then I got another problem, something that I need to be more worried about than that. Every now and then, Jesus, in Luke chapter 12 and the verses 50, Jesus declares, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I? In other words, I'm pinned up. I'm greatly distressed. I'm worried till it be accomplished. But God is saying all the time, don't worry. I got it. And then I hear Paul over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 in the verses 28. Paul worried about the conditions, or the condition rather, of the congregations across the country. When God is telling Paul all the time, don't worry, I got it. And then in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, it tells us, don't worry. And 1 Peter 5, 7, along with Psalms 55 and 22, tells us to take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And when we, watch this now, and when we do, God declares, I got it. You see, it's not our effort that guarantees these things. It's God. In Matthew 6, 25 through 33, it lists eight reasons not to worry. And it all comes down to God's got it. Don't worry, God will. God will what? God will fix it. Don't worry, <clears throat> God will. God will what? God will deliver. Who? Both you and it. Whatever it is. And then number three, God will provide. He'll provide whatever you need. Don't worry, God made Adam and Eve garments to wear surely God can find a suit or a dress for you can I get a witness and then and then in Luke chapter 12 verse number 24 if God can provide for the ravens and the other birds surely God will provide lunch for you he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread some asked a question why did God need more loaves than he did fish? God provide fish sandwiches, not fish snacks. That's two pieces of bread and a piece of fish. God makes a sandwich. Uh, oh, I, I, I wish I had a church up in here this morning, but since we just still put it together after the pandemic, Psalms 145 in verse 15 and 16, don't worry about bread lines, food deserts, God will provide. He gives you food in due season. Sometime we'll turn our back on God for a snack. Y'all, y'all, y'all do remember the Bible. When God opens his hand, he satisfy our desires. Don't you want God to keep his hand open for you and for me? Now to our text this morning. And the subject in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 
God's got it. So let the rest of it go. God's got it. So let it go. Whatever your problems are, give them to Jesus. God's got it. So let it go. Get for me now. Let's let's put some Bible on this thing now. Let's go to Second Chronicles. I'm going to hit Second Chronicles 18, 19, and 20. So be ready to make the transition between Second Chronicles chapter 18, chapter 19, and chapter 20. I need you to understand that some stuff we bring on ourselves. But even when we bring stuff on ourselves, God is telling us, I got it. You just got to let it go. Sometimes we cause hurt, harm, and, and, and despair and distress to come into our lives. But God is telling us all the time, I got it. Just let it go. God's children should never have to stress about anything. Now, we do worry. But that shouldn't be long. It, 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 it just bring me to the point to recognize I ain't got to worry. God's got it. But if God's got it, I got to have a relationship with him. I got to understand that God can fix it for me if I let him. Now watch this. In, in, in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter uh, 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 20, I want to hit 20 <coughs> in verse 1 first. Because I want to show you something. I want to paint a mental picture in your mind. First, I need to show you <clears throat> that just because things are going well, don't mean it's going to always go well. And then I need to show you, just when things are going well, the devil will slip in and say, well, since stuff is going so well, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you come over here? Why don't you do a little bit of that? And then, when things are going, then they will, and then... And then you're going to realize that, hmm, snap. Have you ever done something and you thought about it? Hmm, snap. I shouldn't have done that. Hmm, snap. What am I going to do now? Hmm, snap. Who saw that? In other words, have what you did ever caused you to think about the consequences after you did it? Amen. <laughs> did someone ever come to you and say, boy, you done did it now? Now, we know that's not proper English, but they said, boy, you done did it now. You done messed up, sure enough. Can I get a witness? <coughs> Stay with me just a little while. Shan't be long, as, as the brother in Fort Lauderdale says, shan't be long. But watch this. The Bible says <clears throat> in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in verse number 1, watch what he says. It came to pass. Whoa, this. whoa, wait, 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 wait. Wait, now, now. Now, it came to pass, meaning it happened after this. In other words, it came to pass, but it happened after this. See, a lot of stuff in our life happens after this. Because if you hadn't messed with that, then this wouldn't have happened. Can I get a witness? Are you with me so far? So it says it happened after this. After what? Now watch this. It says it came to pass after this. After what? You need to know what this is. Can I get a witness? Y'all help me out just a little bit. They done turned the heat up on me and it's getting hot up here. And then something else done happened. And then y'all all tied up because you're still worrying about pandemic. But I need you to understand. God's got it. God's got it. Let some stuff go. Got to fix it if you turn it loose. You know it's hard to fix a toy when the baby keeps holding on to it. You got to convince the baby to let the toy go. Lord Jesus. Watch this. It happened after this. Now go, to, go back to chapter 18. Chapter 18. I told you we're going from 18, 19, and 20. I need you to be ready to flip between the two. Now in chapter 20 it said it came to pass... After this, in other words, I need you to understand what was the after this. What was this that this came to pass to be after this? Can I get, do you understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. In verse number one, chapter 18, the Bible says, Now Jehoshaphat, now Jehoshaphat, letting you know who we're talking about. Now Jehoshaphat, 
the Bible says, had riches and honor. Had, had, watch this, watch this. Just because you got a little something, something don't mean you can do what you want to do, like you want to do, when you want to do it. Sometimes God blesses us, and he blesses us too much. And we take the blessings for granted. And somebody come along and tell you, how you living? They invite you over for a treat. You eat the treat, then, they, then there's an attachment. You know, fish don't get a worm for free. Can I get a witness? Fish do not get a worm for free. If a fish grab hold of that worm, it's going to cost him, and it may cost him his mouth. It may cost him his jaw, but it may cost him his life. And then if that fish stay hooked long enough and he keeps swimming around in the ocean, a bigger fish come along and grab him. Oh, watch this. In chapter 18, verse number one, I need you to see this. In chapter 18, verse number one, I need you to see what the this is that we all hung up about over here. The Bible says, <clears throat> Jehoshaphat had, had riches and, and honor in abundance. In abundance. He had a joy. whole bunch of stuff the bible says and join the and join affinity with ahab now sometime you think because you got a little something something you can roll with whoever you want to we even roll with folk that despise god because they share the same stuff we share i drive a a uh, 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 rose and they drive a rose we got a whole lot in common we rose drivers you ain't got nothing in common. Watch what the Bible says. Now watch this. Watch this now. I got to paint a mental picture in your mind. Now verse number one says, now Jehoshaphat had riches, honor, had honor, and abundance. In abundance. And joined affinity and with Ahab. And affinity. In other words, he gave allegiance to Ahab. Watch this. Verse number two. And after certain years. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. now, now this wasn't for a few days. He hooked up with Ahab. Ate with him, fellowship with him, stayed with him a long time. How long? Two years. Sometime you can stay too long in a situation. Have you ever realized you just wasted too much time in a situation? Dating so and so and five years later he's still sorry. And then you say, oh Lord, what am I going to do now? Let him go. Let him go. If he had done something and, 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 you know, if a brother hadn't, hadn't proved himself in a week or two, you ought to be able to know if you got a job in a week or two. You ought to be able to know if he loved you in a week or two. You ought to be able to know if he had put you before his mama in a week or two. You ought to know if that's his car in a week or two. You ought to know do we have a real job in a week or two oh Jesus <laughs> stuff we bring on ourselves I'm going to show you some stuff that we bring on ourselves and Lord I hope we have time but we may run out of time but but I'm going to give you as much as I can watch it the Bible says come on <clears throat> and after certain years he and after certain years Ahab, he went down to Ahab to Samaria to Samaria and Ahab, and Ahab see, see some folks see you coming they start cooking they ain't cooking because they, they love to see you coming. coming. They cooking because they got something they want to ask of you. They got something they want from you. Oh, Jesus. Watch this. The Bible says. And Ahab killed sheep. And Ahab, said. watch this now. Ahab saw him coming. Ahab killed some sheep. Killed some oxen. For him, he In did abundance. it how? In abundance. Killed a whole bunch of sheep. Get a whole bunch of words. We're going to throw down tonight. Watch what the Bible says. And for the people that. And for the people that he had with him. And persuaded him. And to go oh, see, him. I told you there was a hook stuck in this worm. I need you to see this now. And persuaded him to go up with him to the Ramah Gilead. Now, watch this. In other words, he wasn't cooking for nothing. And hey got Ab. something I want to ask of you. He wasn't just doing this out of the goodness of his heart. He wanted to ask him something. Now watch this. The Bible says in verse number three. 
and Ahab, king and, of Israel. And Ahab, king Jehoshaphat. of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Will thou go with, with wow, me? There it is. There's the hook. Will thou go with me to, to the Ramah Gilead? And he see because now have have folk ever done something to you and done something for you that you felt obligated to do something for them? And you knew it was a setup. You knew it was a setup. Oh, that's why he cooked dinner. Mm, that's why he did this. Have you ever saw through it? But you was already hooked. Watch this now. The Bible says. He answered him. He answered him. I am as thou art. Woo, woo, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <coughs> now, Ahab is a heathen. Ahab is a man without God on his side. Ahab is a man who turned his back on God. And now, Jehoshaphat, it's got the nerve to say, look, I'm just like you. We got stuff together. We got stuff in common. The Bible says, and Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will thou go with me to Ramah Gilead? <clears throat> and he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as, as people. thy people, and we, we will, will be, be with thee in, the in war. war. Do you know what you just said? You go, oh, good God Almighty. You need to understand that sometimes you can let your mouth overload your program. Can I get a witness? And er, the boy said, er, nine then, your mouth would do it to you. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, they went to war. Now, watch this. Jehoshaphat knew he shouldn't have been out there. Have you ever gone somewhere and you knew you shouldn't have been there? Have you ever got to a party? He said, oh, man, I shouldn't have come in here. They were buck wild. Come on, somebody been at a party that was buck wild? And then you say to yourself, man, I shouldn't have been in wrong folk up in here. Then folks start pressing on you and pushing against you and start demanding stuff from you. And then you said, man, I shouldn't have been in here. I ain't like that. This ain't my crowd. Jehoshaphat made a deal with Ahab and said, I'll be there for you. Your war is my war. My people are like your people. I'm just like you. We got something in common. Now watch this thing now. Drop down to verse number 28. I'm going to show you when, you when you let your mouth overload your program, you get in a situation. Have you, have you ever got to the party and then you realize folk up in here you don't need to see and you start trying to disguise yourself? <laughs> Come on, somebody been in the party and somebody was there? Or, if, if, or, or, or better yet, you've been in the party. You've been in the club. You've been at the bar. You've been wherever you are. And then you come out and you see church folk coming along the side. And then you try, try to hide yourself. Oh, come on. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Watch this. He says in verse number 28, watch this. <clears throat> so the king of so Israel. So the king of Israel. And Jeddah and, and Jehoshaphat. And, and, and watch this. And Jehoshaphat, the king, the king of, of Judah, Judah went, went up to Ramoth Gideon. Gideon. And the king, and of, the Israel king said, of Israel said unto, unto Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, I would, I would disguise, disguise myself. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, now, first of all, he says, now, 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 he says, I'm going to disguise myself. Now, there's a reason why a brother want to disguise himself. The Bible says, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I would disguise myself and I would go to battle. But. Put, put thou on thy way. Wait robes. a minute. Sound look like a setup to me. Have you ever? I said, no, 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 no. Why you, why you, why you send to go to meeting clothes? No. Uh, why your school jacket? Uh, you know, wear that dress. No. Wear that suit. No, 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 no. You need. Have you ever been there? Oh Lord, I got, I got the wrong group this morning. I should have had the group last week. Uh, I know some of them been there. Now watch this. Watch this. The Bible says. So the king of Israel. So the king of himself, Israel disguised himself. And they went to the and battle. went to, and went to battle. Now, now, why would you want to go to war with somebody that don't want nobody else to know who they are? 
but yet they tell you to put on your robe so everybody would know who you are. Why would you want to put yourself in that situation? Remember I said there's some stuff we bring on ourselves. We put ourselves in situations that we should not be. Watch what else he says. Come on. The Bible says. Now the king of Syria. Now the king of the Syria. Of the chariot. Had commanded the captain of the chariot. That were with him. That were with him. Saying fight. Saying fight. Ye not with ye small. Ye not with small or great. Save only with save the king only of Israel. only with the king of Israel. Ooh, good God Almighty. He says, don't worry about nobody. Just jump on the king of Israel. Now watch this. And the Bible says in verse 31. It came to pass. It came to pass. When the when captains, the captains of, the chariot, of the chariot saw. Said, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you that even when you're dumb, God will take care of you. If I say God's got it, God's got it. Have you ever done something that you realize after you were committed, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have done this? Have you ever been on a date with Mr. Hands? I, I just let that settle in for a minute. Have you ever been on a date with Mr. Hands? You thought Mr. Hands was a nice guy, and, and then all of a sudden, he's all over the place. And then you ask yourself, what am I doing in a place like this with a brother like this? Boy, y'all don't identify with nothing. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. In verse number 31, and it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, that, that they, they said, it is it's the, the king, king of Israel. Israel. Now, let me show you something. Have you ever been misidentified? Have somebody ever mistaken you for somebody else? And they was getting ready to put a beat down on you. Fortunate, fortunate, fortunate. But one or two of y'all been in that situation like that. No, I'm not him. Oh, man. Come on, watch this. He says. Therefore, they can pass. A Therefore, watch the, watch, watch, the, watch the, They said, there he is. And they encircled Jehoshaphat. But I'm going to tell you, when God's got it, you ain't got to worry about the crowd. When God's got it, you ain't got to worry about stuff, things in them. When God's got it, you, you can eat. Watch this, watch this. God will even help your dumb self get out of a mess that you put yourself in. When God's got it. But let me tell you something. It's still going to cost you a little something, something. But watch this now. The Bible says. But Jehoshaphat cried. But, oh, watch this. Look at what he did. But Jehoshaphat cried out. Woo, wait a minute. Have you, y'all, y'all, y'all remember Peter when he was walking on the water? And then he started sinking. He cried out, Lord, save me. In other words, you need to have a relationship with God that when you find yourself in the wrong crowd, doing the wrong thing for the wrong reason, you ought to be able to say, Lord, help me get out of this mess. And if you help me get out of this mess this time, I ain't going to ever get back in this kind of mess again. Watch this. Now, they've encircled Jehoshaphat. And then Jehoshaphat recognized, boy, you about to die up in here because they think you are the king of Israel. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this now. And he cried out. And the Lord helped him. And watch this. He cried out. And God moved Bring me back up, back up. And he cried out. And yep. the Lord helped him. Watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this purposely. And, and he cried out. And the, the Lord helped him. And he cried out. And the Lord helped him. In other words, him. when a child of God cried out. And you in the right relationship with God. God will help you every time. Amen. He'll see you through. Don't worry about some stuff sometimes. We all make the wrong decisions. We all do wrong things from time to time. But don't wallow in being wrong. How out, God help me. Help me get out of this mess. Help me to see the light. Help me to find my way through this. Lord, if you just help me this time. If you just help me this time. Can you imagine Jehoshaphat encircled by the enemy and they all thinking he's somebody else. Would you want to? There's a lot of men on death row. A lot of men on death row facing the threat of death every day for things they did not do and know they didn't do. Can't get nobody to hear them. Can't get nobody to listen to them. Amen. 
They made appeal after appeal and nothing has gone through for them. And they're sentenced to die. Amen. South Carolina governor just signed the bill. They took lethal injection off the table. So you got a choice now. You can go to the electric chair or you can face the firing squad. Those are your two choices now. Come on, somebody. Can you imagine being in an electric chair in that leather mask that's on your face? They put so much juice through that thing that your mask catch on fire. Can you imagine the brother screaming and the pain and the hurt that's going through that? Can you imagine being stand upright before a firing squad? And then somebody says, ready? Aim. Fire. You got 12 bullets, at least 12, because they got brothers that's supposed to be able to shoot. So you got at least 12 bullets coming your way. It's a terrible thing. Now, Jehoshaphat finds himself in a terrible way. He's in his chariot. He's surrounded by the enemy. And then he cries out. Can you imagine? Uh, now, watch this. The Bible says, and... God move. Watch it, 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 watch it. They, they encompass him. Watch this. They encompass him about. By they ready to fight. fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out. Cried out. Now watch it, now watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. He cried out. Now, the Bible don't say what Jehoshaphat said when he cried out. But we know whatever he cried out about in whatever he said God came to his aid because the Bible says what and the Lord helped him and the Lord when Jehoshaphat cried out the Bible says and the Lord helped him and watch watch how God helped him and God moved, moved them to depart to from leave him, him alone here folk ready to kill you have encircled you, have encompassed you all about, and you know you're going to die. And you cry out to God because you got a relationship with him. God said, I got it. I don't care how many has encircled you, I got it. Depend on me, I got it. And whatever God did, God put it in their hearts to leave Jehoshaphat alone. Have you ever been in a situation where you knew you were about to get a beat down? And, and, and mama came along and said, said baby, uh, let him go this time. Don't, don't put the beat down on him. Uh, I think he learned his lesson. You've scared him to death. Look at him over there shaking and trembling. He, he, he let him, baby, 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 let him see. See, when mama put a plea in for you, it ought to mean a little something, something. Can I get a witness? See, mama know how to say, baby, leave, leave the boy alone. Oh, snap, I got, I got the wrong group this morning. Lord, help me, Jesus. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Now, now you know how God will keep him. Now watch this. He says, and he cried out. And the Bible says, and they departed. Watch this. And it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. See, God can fix it for you. Now, let me show you a little something, something else. Go to 19 verse 1 19 verse 1 see now now you ought to be glad when God gets you through something and you know it was God that got you through that something some of us should have been fired long time ago you know you should have been fired long time ago come to work when you get ready call in and you know you're not sick clock in and sit down Come on, somebody. And some of us got jobs we know we ain't supposed to have. Can't do that job. Got it by a friend. 
<laughs> Watch this. Chapter 19, <clears throat> verse number 1. I want to I wanna show you this. Jehoshaphat returns home. Now, see, when God blesses you and he delivers you from something, go home. Go home. You've been in the street. God spared you. Go home. You were in the wrong crowd and the gang showed up and God delivered you. Go home. Sometimes you need to just count your loss and just go home. Watch this. In 19, verse number 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. Now watch this. Letting you know who we're talking about. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. Returned to his returned house. To his house in, in peace, peace to, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now watch this. Ain't God good? He tied up with the wrong crowd. Went out to fight against the wrong crowd. Hooked up with the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd going to kill him. But God delivered him from the wrong crowd. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. Watch this thing now. And Jehu. The son of Hanani. Oh, watch this. The seer. Now, watch this. You see? See, now, 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 now. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against you. Watch this. Sometime you can hook up with the wrong crowd, and God will bless you and deliver you from that crowd. But the other crowd heard about you being with that crowd. Now that crowd is now looking for you. Y'all remember Bebe? Bebe had some brothers. <laughs> Bebe. Watch this. Verse number two, the Bible says. <clears throat> And Jehu, the son of Hanani, and Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer went out the to seer meet him. went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat. Now watch, 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 watch this. See, see, we get upset when folk confront us in making the wrong decisions. When folk confront us in our sin. When folk confront us by saying, "I know the truth, and you need to fix it." Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. Come on. And said to King Jehoshaphat. And said to King Jehoshaphat. Help the young God. He says, watch this, watch this. Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Now, watch this. Jehoshaphat had hooked up with Ahab. Now, let me tell you something. Just because you got, you think you got something in common with folk, don't mean you're supposed to hang out with them. Don't mean you're supposed to run with them. Don't mean you're supposed to fight with them. Don't mean you're supposed to get caught up in their stuff. You got enough just to keep you straight. You, 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 you can't afford to get hooked up with the wrong crew. Watch what he said. Shouldest thou help the ungodly? He said, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and the love Lord. them that hate the Lord? What is he doing? He's indicting Jehoshaphat for being, for giving his allegiance, for, for, for putting the lives of his people in jeopardy for sin. Why should God bless you in that? But remember that God delivered Jehoshaphat. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong crowd. God delivered him. But watch this. The Bible says, go on. Therefore, if wrath is upon thee from he's, before what? the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So other words, what he's saying, God ain't through with you. Have you ever thought you were through with sin? But sin was not through with you. All right. You and brother man been out on the town. Y'all been... Y'all been going out quite a bit. <clears throat> and you've been giving up quite a bit. And you've been giving in quite a bit. You've been giving over quite a bit. And you just said no for the last time last week because it's been yes every day this week. Now watch this. And then, and then you say, well, I'm, I'm through with bruh man. I ain't going out with bruh man no more. I'm through with sin. Oh, man. Yeah. Then you go to the doctor. Oh, man. Uh. Doctor said, Congratulations. I think it's going to be a boy. <laughs> now, because you are through with sin, don't mean sin is through with you. You already told bro man get lost. Bro man gone now. Now you're on your own. You and baby bro man. Watch this. The Bible says, 
nevertheless, there are good things. He says, watch, 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 but let me back up a little bit. He says, now, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. In other words, something going to happen to you. Something come in your direction. And remember now, you brought this on yourself. God let you get out of that. But let me tell you something. Just because God let you get out of something don't mean that something is through with you. Watch what he says. Verse number three. Nevertheless, there are good things. There are good things. Found. In other words, there's still some good in you, boy. Ain't you glad when God can still find good in you and save you because of the good in you? Not the good in your mama, not the good in your daddy, not the good in somebody else, but the good he saw in you. Ain't you glad? That God can see good in you. Watch this. The Bible says, "Nevertheless, now there watch, are good watch. things found in thee, mm -hmm. and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land." Now watch this. He says, "Now, now, now, you've taken away the groves out of the land, and has prepared thy heart to seek God." And now, and now you want to do right. He said, "There's some good in you. Have you ever decided?" I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to make God my choice. In other words, I'm going to do right now. But then in verse number four, and everyone asks help of the Lord. See, now, when you decide to do right, you ought to try to convince the folk that are around you to do right. Because you're saying to them, I ain't going down that road no more. Y'all need to do right. And then in verse 5, and Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation in the house of the Lord. And in verse number 6, God, we know you can. In other words, see, when, when, when stuff hits you in the face, you got to cry, God, I know you can. You did it before I... I know you can. You helped me through situations before God, and I know you can. Ain't that all right? When you, when you can be in a mess, and then you can say to God, because you're trying to get right now, God, I know you can. I know you can see me through. God, I know you can. God, I know you can help me make a change in my life. I know you can. And then in verse 7, watch this. In verse 7, you did it before, God, and I know you can do it again. All right, I, 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 he says that. Drive them out. In other words, Jehoshaphat said, we, we don't have the strength. I don't have the manpower. I, remember, remember Jesus? Remember God when you told us to come into the land and you told us don't kill these and don't kill those and don't kill them. Now these, those, and them are coming back on me. Now, Lord, I know you can have you ever had a chance to do something to straighten something out for you down the road and you let them slide and it come back to bite you? And then in verse number 10, watch this. And now behold the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, the same ones you wouldn't let us kill when we came into the land. They are the same ones that's coming against us now. And then verse number 11, look at how they reward us, God. They're coming after us now. In verse number 12, God, will you not judge them for what they're about to do to us? And then verse 13, now all Judah waits to hear from the Lord. Can I get a witness up in here? Now, 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 watch this, watch this. I'm going to do some spot checking. And then in verse 15, and he said, hearken ye all Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat thus says the Lord unto you be not afraid good God Almighty when you see things have changed when you see everybody is against you and you know you're going down for the third time and God says be not afraid nor dismay by reason of this great multitude he says don't let them scourge you and then he says get for me Get for me verse number 16, somebody. Get for me verse number 16. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 16 and 17. And then I got to, I got to stop. There's, there's more I want to do, but I, I got to stop. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I want to drop down to verse number 16. Because God tells them, first of all, don't worry. 
Now watch this. Just because God tell you don't worry about something don't mean that it's not something for you to do. All right. God always gives you something to do. When God delivers you, it's always something for you to do. Watch this, verse 16. Tomorrow go ye down. He said, now watch this. He says, tomorrow I want you to go on down. Against them. He says, I want you to go on down against them. Now Behold. watch this. Wait a minute. And now, now, now Jehoshaphat already said, we ain't got the power. We don't have the might. We don't have the strength. They're going to kill us all. God, what you going to do? And God said, go on down there. God is saying what? Have faith. If you want me to intercede for you, have faith. If you want me to fight your battles, have faith. Go on down there and see what I'm going to do. Go on down there. The Bible says, come on. Behold. Behold. They come up by the cliffs of Ziz. And now he says, this is the route they're going to take. He said, this is the route they're going to take. He says, now, 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 watch this. He says, behold, they're going to come up by the cliffs of Zig. And you and shall, you find, shall them find them at the, the at the end of the brook. Before the, before wilderness. the wilderness of Jerel. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse, verse number 17. You shall not need to fight. Oh, see, see, God hadn't got to that verse yet. He said, y'all going down there. And see, now that took faith for them to go, because Verse 17 hadn't been quoted yet. So that meant they got to go on down there on faith. And when you let God lead you by faith, God will deliver you every time. Watch, he said, go on down there by faith is what he's saying. And then he says in verse 17, ye shall not need to, to fight, fight in, this battle. in this battle. Set yourselves. Set yourselves. In other words, go on down there and take a stand for the Lord. He says, you ain't got to fight. You ain't going to have to lift a hand. But he told them that after he told them to go on down there. In other words, God needs to know, are you willing to go on down there? Do you have faith to go on down there? And when you get on down there, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Nothing. Just stand still and see the glory, see the salvation of the Lord stand still. I'll fight you better. Why? Because this ain't your fight. It's mine. But I need you to have faith. Go on down there. Stand still. See the, how, how we eliminate ourselves? We too scared to go on down there. Watch this. Finish that piece that I got to go. And see the salvation and of the Lord the with you. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. Now watch this. He says, O Judah and Jerusalem. O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. Woo! Watch, he says, fear not. Nor be dismayed. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go, Tomorrow out, against go out against them. For the Lord, For the Lord will be with good you. Good God, God is with you. He says, don't you worry about a thing. He says, go on out there. The Lord would do what? He will be with you. Ain't God good? Amen. See, some things we bring on ourselves. And when God deliver us, it's still going to cost us something. Amen. Because God want to know where your heart is. Do you still have faith? Are you willing to listen to me after I deliver you? Are you willing to trust me after I deliver you? And so he says, okay, I've delivered you. And now you cry again to me. Go on down there. Go on down there. Go on down there and stand against them. And notice he didn't say fight again. He says stand against them. Take a position. See, some of us won't take a position on nothing. Some of us won't stand for nothing. He said go on down there and, 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 and stand against them. And then he says, and, and then he says, I don't want you to fight. It ain't nothing you got to do. He says, it ain't your fight. It's mine. He says, I will deliver you. Let God deliver you. You need to start trusting in God more. Stop depending on everybody else to do what you can do for yourself. Let God help you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Ask and it shall be given. Here's Jehoshaphat. Had made several missteps. Who have made several miscalculations. Who found himself on the wrong side of God. But God delivered him. God saved him. God provided for him. God protected him. And God turned his enemies away from him. Ain't God good? And then 
the brother that they were looking for, a brother caught him. They, they saw him running away, disguised. Uh, and then the Bible says he was an archer. He was a good one. And the Bible says he drew back his bow and he let his arrow fly. And that arrow just flew right over. And the Bible says it caught the king of Israel between the shoulder blades. And the Bible says he slumped in his chariot, but he was able to stand in his chariot. But the Bible said there is where he died. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you won't get away. So it's time for us to cry to God, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. God, fix it. And I know he will. If you're here this morning and God has delivered you from something this week, you know it was God that brought you through. You know it was nothing that you could have done because you were at your wit's end. You, did, you didn't know what else to do. And God stepped in and said, it's not your battle. It's mine. God is saying, I got it. Just let it go. Have God ever told you, I got it. Just let it go. Have you ever studied hard for an exam and, and you wasn't sure whether or not you, you, you were going to make it through the exam, but you didn't stop doing what you're supposed to be doing for God? You didn't duck Bible class to stay home and study. You didn't duck worship to stay home and study. You didn't, you didn't stop helping folk when it was your turn to help folk. You didn't stop visiting folk when it was your turn to visit folk. You didn't stop calling and encouraging folk. You didn't stop sacrificing for folk, but it took time away from your study. But you studied anyhow, and then you went on to your test. Unsure whether or not you would make it. Unsure whether you were properly prepared. And then even after you took the test, you still wasn't sure. And then later, the grades are posted. Later, your name is recognizable. And on the list is your name. And it's checkmark passed. Passed. Why? Because you didn't stop doing what you should have done. You didn't stop giving what you should have been given. You didn't stop living like you should have been living. God gives you a check mark past. I'm a living witness. God will give you a check mark and he'll say pass. God gave Jehoshaphat a check mark and he said pass. Don't you want to hear God say you passed? Don't you want to see your name on a list with other names and, and you ain't looking for nobody else's name but your name? Because you know your last name is a H, so you ain't looking for the A's. You're not looking for the B's. You're not looking for the C's. You're not looking for the D's. You ain't, you ain't even looking for the E's. You sure enough ain't looking for no F's. G's aren't even recorded. Then you roll on down, then you see H. Good God Almighty, there's a bunch of H's on there. So I look for H-A and then run on down H-A-R, then woo H-A-R. Oh! Check mark! God's a good God. Don't you want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant? Check mark. Come on in to a place prepared for you from the foundation of the world? Check mark. Don't you want to hear God say, this is mine? Check mark. You belong to me. Check mark. When you could have done for yourself, you were doing for others. Check mark. When you should have been trying to look out for yourself and worry about yourself, you took your burdens to the Lord and you left them there. Check mark. I won't see nothing but check marks by my name. God is a mighty good God. If you're here this morning, you need to understand whatever you're going through, God's got it. And God will see you through. Amen. If it's on your job, give it to the Lord. God's got it. He'll see you through. If it's at school, give it to God. God's got it. He'll see you through. If it's at home or in your neighborhood, give it to God. God's got it, and he'll see you through. If it's your wife, if it's your husband, if it's your children, just remember God's got them all. Give it to God, and he'll see you through. You need to understand that if it be your desire today, the water is ready. 
somewhere. The clothes are ready everywhere. The question is, are you ready today to say, for God I live and for God I'll die? Are you ready to walk down the aisle and give God your life? Are you ready to say, I was wrong, God, but I want to be right now? Are you ready to allow God to take away not some but all your sins in the watery grave of baptism? In baptism, God will wash away not some but all your sins. You'll come up a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. And if you live faithful unto death, the Lord will give you a crown of righteousness that fadeth not away. If you've been unfaithful this week, if you've been not doing what you ought to be doing every day that you should have been doing, and you know you were wrong, you need to rededicate your life. You need to repent. You need to get it straight with God before it's everlasting too late. God gave you time to get it right so he can give you a check mark. I want my check mark today. Lord, I got it right. Whatever was wrong in my relationship, I got it right. Check mark. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Check mark. And I will give you rest. Check mark. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Check mark. For my, ooh, good God Almighty, for my burdens are easier. He said, he said everything about me is light. So check mark. Everything with God. Check mark. If you hear, won't you come? While we together stand and sing the song of invitation, won't you come? On the poor, away from God. Now I'm coming home. The question was asked, do you want to come home? Of sin too long I've tried. Sometime we stay gone Lord, too long. I'm coming. It's time home. to come home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Yes, sir. Dying arms of love. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I've wasted men, need precious sin. Now, yes, Lord. I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears, Lord, I'm, I'm coming, coming home, and coming home, home. coming home, never more to roam open wide thine arms of Your arms love and Lord. Lord I'm coming home it's good to be able to come home Amen. Amen. no matter wherever you are it's good to be able to go home Yes, sir. And it's always great to know when you get home. God has been a mighty good God to all of us, kept us and brought us a mighty long way. At the extended invitation, we find there are two that are standing with something on their heart. We'll start over here. Uh, Sister Blyler. the blighter is asking for prayers first of all uh, for her situation for her personal self and that's she's sinned she's repented of that sin and she asked for forgiveness and not only that she's thanking the church for their prayers and thanking God for a safe travel to and fro her and her husband had a wonderful time in visiting family and made it home safely <clears throat> we just thank God for God being the God that he is because God is a mighty good God we also have sister Fletcher who is standing has something on her heart as well Good morning.
God's got it. God, give it to God because he's got it. Just trust him and everything will be all right. God's got it. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing like being concerned about your family. And it's nothing like being a young man growing up. But knowing that someone loves you enough to care. Someone loves you enough to pray for you. Someone loves you enough to try their best to give you to God. It's something to behold. It's nothing like a mother's love or a grandma's love or a parental love. It's nothing like it because there's no boundaries. There's no hedges. There's no cliffs. In other words, there's no limitations. Mama will walk the mile for you and give it all to hear you reject her and say no. And she'll do it again and again and again. Because her prayer is that you'll make it right someday. She has that kind of hope. She has that kind of faith. Mothers have that kind of hope and faith in their children. I'm so glad that my mama had a little faith in me. I'm so glad that my parents, my dad and my mom, had a little faith in me. And that you may not be what you need to be right now, but it's our prayer that one day before long, much longer, you will be where you need to be. And I thank God for those prayers, for their concern, for their involvement in my life. And as a young man, it was hard having them all over my business. It was hard, man. Mama, my aunt questioned me about something. It was, I'm a young man. What do you want? All right. <laughs> Nobody growing up appreciated. Even your mama didn't appreciate it when she was growing up. But now looking back, she can thank God that somebody was in her life and made a difference. You know, nobody said, thank you, mama, for that beat down. Nobody said, thank you, grandmama, you know, for, you know, hey, nobody. Think, but when we, time is passing gone, you look back and says, hey, didn't like it then, still don't like it. But I appreciate what they did. I love you. Sister Fleming. Ain't nothing like a good amen <clears throat> any time. But the message was designed to let you know that wherever we find ourselves, God's got it. But some things we bring up on ourselves, and then when we realize that we've messed up, God still got it. All we got to do is trust him for it. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. But learn from your experience. So as we learn better, we do better. God's got it. And I'm going to give it to him because whenever I preach, whenever I speak, I, I speak from a personal standpoint. I'm telling you what I've lived. I'm telling you what I've experienced. I'm telling you what God has done for me because God has given me a pass checkpoint. And I love him. I just thank God for it. Any other prayer requests inside or outside before we close? Any others? If not, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious Father God, we truly thank you for this day, for your mighty works, for life, for health, for all, dear God, that you have continuously do. Even when we're wrong, dear God, you've still been God and waiting for us to turn and come back home. And we're just so appreciative of the fact that there is a home to return. We don't want to be like Dorothy and the Wiz, dear God. Have the opportunity, have what we need right with us and not realize all she had to do was click her heels and come home. And all we got to do is just ask you, God, and we can come home. Unlike the prodigal son uh, out there because of the choice that he made, but he realized, dear God, that it's nothing like being home. And, the, and, and, and your word said when he returned home, when he got within visibility, the father saw him and ran to him. We're so thankful, dear God, that you haven't rejected us to the point where you won't extend your arms of love and welcome us home. And we pray, dear God, for the feast that's been prepared on the table, which is our communion, which is that celebration of welcoming each and every one of us home, dear God. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the gift of the shedded blood that you gave, for the body that you crucified on our behalf on the cross of Calvary. We're thankful, dear God, because you've been better to us than we could have possibly been to ourselves. You brought us from the unknown to the known and back again and we're just so thankful bless us and for those dear God who have gone through surgery we're thankful for those who are 
anticipating surgery. We already give you the thanks, the delivery, and the praise for what you're going to do in their lives. We're just so thankful and appreciative for Brother Norton to God and for his anticipated procedure. We know, dear God, that you are able to deliver us, to bring us, and to see us through whatever trials and challenges. And for his family, for his extended family members, we pray for them as well. And for Brother and Sister Wimberly, we pray, dear God, that you continue to bless them, provide for them, guide them. Let Sister Wimberly be a source of strength and encouragement for Brother Wimberly, that she will always be there to lift him up, to bring him and to guide God for him and to protect him and to see him through the next challenge that lie ahead. We're so appreciative, God, for those that are here this day <clears throat> that are in the assembly, for those, dear God, that are watching by Zoom, by those that are on YouTube, whatever they may be, dear God, we're so thankful for them and for their continued support and prayer for this work that we might continue to make a footprint, not only in this community, but around the world. But we pray, dear God, when our pilgrimage is over, when we pray, dear God, that we breathe the last breath and our arms are folded in death, we pray to God that we receive that check mark passed. All is well with our soul. We ask that before we commune this day. These and all prayers we ask in our son Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. At this time, the brethren come for communion and collection. What he at last, that, that sacred head for such a one. Oh, one as I, as I at, the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first, where I first saw, saw the light, the light and, the burdens and the burdens of my heart, of my they, heart. Rolled away, they rolled away, rolled away. It, it was there. It was there by faith. faith. I received, I received my, my sight. And now, and now I am happy, I'm happy all the day. All the day. Was it for crimes that I have done? He grown upon the tree. Yes, sir. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond decree. And at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Amen. 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 This time is reserved for the Lord's Supper. We see examples in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 7, and it reads, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continue his speech until midnight. Another example in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26, reading verse 26 down to 29. Reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We also see another example in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 down to 30. At this time, the brother is going to pray for the bread and the cup. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you this morning, Father, for blessing us to be here this morning to partake of, of your son who died on Calvary cross for our sins. May you bless this, this prayer, Father, and bless this cup. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us prepare our bread and the cup. We're going to take the bread first and follow by the cup. All to Jesus I surrender all. To him I freely give. And I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Let us take the bread, followed by the cup. If everybody has taken the bread and drunk from the cup, this concludes the Lord's Supper. The next part of the service is collection or offerings. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, tells us when we should give. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, and it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prophesied him that there will be no garden when I come. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, reading verse 6 and 7, we are instructed on how to give. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 reads, But this I say, he who so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who sowed bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. At this time, let us give. Those at home, you can, you can give through our website or Use the cash app. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. He leads me safely through the sinking sin. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. As I onward go and then it meets a foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. 
and blessed Jesus hold my hand and yes I need thee every hour and through this land this pilgrim land protect me by thy saving palm and hear my plea my fever plea oh lord dear lord look down on me and when i kneel in prayer blessed jesus hold my hands amen we also have um Levi from brother and sister jones Pray for what we've collected. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for another opportunity to come together as Christians in the Lost Church to give you a portion of what you blessed us with. Father, we thank you for what has been collected this day. And we pray and ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll say amen again. <clears throat> we want to continue to, to encourage our members uh, that are on watching and uh, participating by live stream on YouTube to continue to use the cash app or, or online giving um, preparation. We, we, we need your continued support. We need you to do what we need done here at the Rock Springs Road congregation. So uh, take advantage of our cash app, number one, or our online giving, number two. Uh, whether you're on site or you're watching observing the service please take advantage of that we want to encourage you and we want to encourage the congregation as that we prepare for july 4th which is the first sunday in july uh our goal our objection is to our objective rather is to get back together face to face we want to use that as our rallying call so we can all look forward to being together in one place united in christ on july 4th so please start preparing for that transition from bed to pew and from home to building that we get those two things together we love you we just thank god for you remember wednesday night uh, at home with the word wednesday night live that was your push back darkness we've been answering questions and dealing with those things every sunday morning 9 30 bible class every sunday morning 10 30 worship service want to thank you for your continued work and support here and for all the ministries that submitted your ministry reports we thank you because we're trying to put together our budget for uh, the remainder of the year, uh, it's paramount that we be able to pick those things up and move forward. We love you. We thank God for you. And remember that our Advent calendar is in the bulletin. It's posted on our website. Uh, it was sent out last week again in the email that you received. Uh, please follow those instructions. Remember, no glass items in the box. Uh, if you still have your box from last month, keep adding to it. Bring it on in when you get it filled. If you're still working on your box from February, ah, you're a little bit behind time. So we need you to kind of step it up. If you still got that February box, we need you to fill it up, bring it on in here. And if you're working on March, ah, 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 we'll give you a little bit more time with that one. But get it on in here, all right, so we can make it happen. We love you. We just thank God for you. And with that said... Are there any other announcements? Anything downstairs? Norton. All right. Uh, nothing else. Then, uh, Brother Norton, if you would, uh, take us home. If you would be standing, please. Keep me all that I may be found and sing with them. Shum